on the water has been brought to you by G'day, here we are at Sandringham Yacht Club with Phil Strong, club captain of the OTB. How are you Phil? Good thanks. Thank you. Good. Phil, what's OTB? OTB is the off the beach section of Sandringham Yacht Club where we sail dinghies from ages of 8 years old up to 64, 65 or as old as you want. Whew, there's still an opportunity for me then. Just. Only just. <laughs> So Phil, you've been sailing for a good while. What have been the highlights of your sailing career? Huh, that's been quite a few. I guess um, I started sailing here as a, as a junior. I've been to world championships sailing with, uh, with my brother. I've been sailing uh, 14 foot skiffs probably for the last 30 years. That's probably been the highlight of my uh, sailing career in the, in the last sort of 10 or 15 years. And we've heard from Stewie Vickery before that sailing 14 foot skiffs is pretty good fun. Yes, it's a great fun. It's a, it's a great way of life. I think I started sailing uh, as a kid with Stuart and his brothers as well. And those sort of friendships and, that we've developed uh, from sailing have, uh, have lasted over the years. Mm, it seems to be that's the case with sailing. People form long-term long relationships with people because it's uh, just one of those things that happen, that grows from those. From yes, sailing. it's a sport and it's a way of life. Mm. There seems to be a lot of kids around on the weekend enjoying themselves. How did they get involved? How did they find the OTB area at Sandringham Yacht Club? Uh, generally people, uh, parents uh, look for something uh, for their children to do in sport and sailing's uh, an obvious uh, area that uh, children should be involved in. It teaches them great life skills in, uh, that they'll, they'll keep forever. The kids get come down, they get involved with the our boating academy or our sailing school and that, mm. that sailing school takes them through a, a, a ref, sort of basic course for about six weeks and then if, the, if they think they like it then they come along and they sail, uh, join the club and they start sailing in the dinghies, uh, in the smaller dinghies and so forth. There seems to be two different kinds of dinghies that the kids sail. What's the difference between the two and why would you choose one from the other? Uh, there's no real reason to choose one over the other, but the two we, we've chosen two separate types of boats for uh, the the unique in terms of one's a uh, two-man boat or a two-person boat, uh, and the other's a uh, single-handed boat. And the single-handed boat we've chosen is the Optimus dinghy, and there uh, it's the single biggest class in the world, and it is one of the greatest little training boats for kids to. Or, juniors to start sailing in and get involved in the sport of sailing. The two-handed boat we're sailing is the International Cadet and the International Cadet is, uh, is sailed all over the world. It's a, it's a big class and the kids can get involved in that. They, uh, they have a skipper who's a, obviously an experienced junior sailor and they pick up junior crews who want to get into sailing at the age of sort of eight or nine and then they get together and they start learning to sail and they can go from state championships to national championships to world championships. Would the skipper on the International Cadet have come from the Opties? Would that where he started from or would the skipper just have... how would they have got to be the skipper of the two-handed boat? Really they come from... Um, they can come from being a, a crewed position in an International Cadet mm. and as in, an, in, an, in the International Cadet the kids come through, they crew uh, for a skipper and the skipper will teach them how to sail and then when they're old enough they will get moved forward to the next level okay. and they will start to skipper their own boat. Also they can come from the Optimus, the single-handed class boat as well. When they get too big for that, that class they can move into that in, into the International Cadet as a skipper and pick up a junior crew and okay. train them. Okay, so there's two paths to getting to that, that situation oh, so, of being a skipper. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what we've, um, we've worked on. So thanks Phil for your time down here at Sandringham and we look forward to seeing you on the water. Thanks Lee. Thanks Phil. We've got Mark Chaz Jackson. Now Chaz, what is it that you love about teaching kids to sail? Uh, well I guess the main thing uh, caveman is um, uh, just that they can enjoy themselves 
and um, that they can um, learn and then sort of participate on their own. So that's that's the main thing that I'm trying to trying to get across to them. Do you think uh, with this kind of sporting endeavour that it actually develops confidence in them as as they as they're growing older? Oh, absolutely. I mean, sailing's a sport where uh, they're out in the boat on their own. Um, they've got to be independent. So whatever we teach them is really uh, off the water. Um, and away from the boat, and then they've got to really go out there and do it on their own. So, once they're developing the confidence out there, because in the decision-making process, if they're making the wrong decision, they're at the end of the fleet. Well, yeah, exactly right. Um, I mean, they've, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff to learn, there's a lot of stuff to know. I mean, sailing's a bit of a complex sport in that sense, and they're out there for quite a long time on their own. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, if, if they start to make some mistakes, you know, they've got to be able to learn from that and move on while they're out on the water. Yeah. All right, Chaz, thanks very much, mate. No worries. Thanks, Gabe, man. Cameron and Alison, brother and sister team, you guys are heading over to the world. Cameron, how old are you? Um, I'm 14. 14. Alison? I'm 12. And as a brother and sister team, do you sit there having a bit of a blue over who's doing what and who's making the decisions? How does that work? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, not bad, going over to the world titles, uh, good luck over there, and um, you know, we'll see you out in the water. Thanks. Yeah. We have enough, you guys, being brother and sister, are heading over to the world titles as well. Yep, yep. Now, you've also been over for the, in the Optimus, is that right, mate? Yeah, in 2004 I went over. Alright, so you're heading off to Hungary this year? Yeah. And you've got uh, some team members from your own club as well, so that'll be fun. Yeah. No worries, well good luck and we'll, uh, we'll speak to you a bit later. Yep, bye. thanks. Okay, bye. How's it going, Melissa? That's good. Can I jump in your boat and have a go? Yes. That'd be cool. Melissa, thank you very much for letting me have a go. That's okay. Now, what was I doing wrong? Well, you were sitting in the boat. Um, you weren't pulling on the main sheet. You were holding the tiller, not on the extension. And yeah, a lot of other things. So basically, you don't see me at the next Worlds. No. <laughs> thank you. See ya. <laughs> On the Water has been brought to you by